Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR Today for Monday, March 15th, 2021. I'm the man they call Meathead, joined this morning by the lovely Linda K. Good morning, Linda. How you doing? Good morning, Meathead. I'm, I'm still adapting to this daylight savings time yeah. stuff that just happened. Uh... <laughs> I get it. I get it. But but we get more more sunlight, more daylight. So yeah, you know, that. I need you to dig into something called Taco Standard Time and see if that works out for you. You know, it's uh, Matthew and I. We've been watching the league, so he's on Taco Standard Time now. We'll have to figure out if that works or not. You know, I did a little digging on um, time zones when daylight savings time was coming up. You know, there's some countries that do 30 minutes and 45 minutes. Isn't that weird? Oh, and think maybe, it, I was going to say think of China. Think of China, oh. how wide it is. China's as wide as like the continental U.S. One time zone. Wow, it's crazy because there's some states here, like uh, like Kentucky, which I'm aware of since Kentucky. I you know have my trips to Louisville. Yeah, one half the state is central, one one part is eastern. Some other yep. states too. Interesting. Yeah, Texas, for example, has a Mountain Standard Time in it, and you know almost all central. So. Yeah, that uh, everybody thinks there's four time zones in the country. Actually, Hawaii has its own time zone, and Alaska runs on two of them: Alaskan time, and I believe it's uh, Hawaii time, or whatever it's called. But so it's kind of weird. Now yeah. it works. Not everybody celebrates or celebrates. Not everybody observes. <laughs> uh, not that we're all celebrating. Not everybody observes even daylight savings time. I think there's uh, Arizona's one of them that doesn't observe it. So yeah, I mean, time's all a human construct to begin with, anyway, right? All right. So let's talk about something human constructed. It's our sponsors, manscaped.com. They are saving you 20%, getting you silky smooth, ready for beach weather. You know, with WrestleMania coming up down in Tampa, maybe it'll warm up. You get uh, some skin showing. You know, the, that pale skin needs a little sun. Get yourself over to manscaped.com. 20% off with the promo code PWR. Uh, and then while you're out on the beach, while you're wearing your wrestling street fashion, make sure it's collar and elbow brand.com. PWR 360 will save you 10% off. I have not made it through my new supply of collar and elbow brand t-shirts that I've gotten recently. I don't know if their promo is still running with the free shipping, but uh, head on over there, take a look. And they got a lot of great gear going on. Linda, I know that you're thinking about, and you haven't, you know, solidified, you haven't locked in your plans for WrestleMania yet, but I have some news for you. Tell me. <clears throat> Excuse me. John Alba uh, from Spectrum Bay 9 News, I believe, down in the Tampa area, says he can independently confirm the WWE is aiming for 45,000 people per night at Raymond James Stadium for WrestleMania. 45,000 they are attempting to fill the building with. That is huge. Now, the talk was, you know, with the NFL having done, I think they did 15% capacity for the Super Bowl. The WWE obviously would have a lot more people to use because they use the field as well. Right. So, I mean, WWE capacity wise could probably put in, you know, 75, 80,000, 90,000 if it was a full night. But if they're trying to do 45,000 people in each night, do you think they would sell that out? Tickets going on sale this Tuesday. You know what? For both. At first, yeah, at first, I would say absolutely. Um, a lot of us. Diehard fans or event fans in general are just dying to get up to a live and safe live event. However, because of the announcement being so late and just the fact that maybe people worldwide, you know, still can't necessarily travel into the States. I'm not really sure what travel bans, if right. any, are still existing or this won't be just, a big international show this time. Yeah. Or maybe they're just, you know, people are still, still uncomfortable in the States as well to travel or go to you know, big scale of it, large scale of it, excuse me. So I'm not sure, but you know, state of Florida is big. I mean, once the announcement was made or just, you know, anybody in the States willing to drive or fly, you know, I, if you know what, you know, what, I'm going to say yes, just because this is the biggest event of the year. I think and the biggest event in the COVID era. Yes. And despite the tickets, being announced rather late in the game yeah. this year. Most people, I believe, already had WrestleMania on their radar, knowing, like, okay, if the Super Bowl happened, we're going to eventually get this announcement about WrestleMania tickets. So, um, excuse me, for example, I've had it on my calendar <laughs> that mm -hmm. this is going to happen. So, I, you know, I waited on my travel plans until I felt more confident that tickets were going to go on sale. And 
you know, or even so right now, just because of the COVID era, a lot of airlines are being very lenient in, you know, travel. So I feel most people have tentatively planned on going. So I, I, I change my mind. I will say yes, both nights will sell out if it can get to that 45. Okay. So a little bit more as far as news from this John Alba here. Now, um, first off, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed an executive order last fall that allows for stadiums to run full capacity should they choose to do so. But no one has done that show to a magnitude so far in Florida. Think about what runs in Florida. We've got AEWs in Florida. We had Tampa Bay had their stadium. We had Miami. We had Jacksonville. We had the Super Bowl down there. I mean, you know, and now we're going to have WrestleMania. Also, the Daytona 500 and is going to be happening break. as well. Spring, spring break. break. Right, exactly. Uh, here's here's another uh, bit of news that hopefully, you know, enlightens our day and shows us that, you know, we're getting to maybe a little bit more normal. The Texas Rangers in uh, Arlington have clearance to fill their stadium with about 40,000 to start their season right around the same time as WrestleMania. So the Texas Rangers in that brand new ballpark they have uh, are going to be allowed to have 40,000. Daytona 500 uh, is estimating they're going to be in the 25,000 to 30,000 range. So WrestleMania, if they can fill it at 45,000 per night will be the biggest event in this COVID era that we have. Now, just because, and this is per John Alba, just because WWE wants 45,000 doesn't mean they're going to get it. There's no international travel. I mean, I guess if you come by tugboat and you can get here on time, maybe, you know, Wait, that'll like work. tugboat, but, tugboat? Yeah, tugboat. Yeah, tugboat. Oh, okay. Um, but I guess the question is, again, are they hoping for 80,000 people possibly to be in the WrestleMania area. Will shenanigans happen this year? I mean, that's still on the table as well. Right. Um, you know, I've seen posts for other various events popping up. So I think we're still going to get a heavy crowd into Tampa and the surrounding areas. And with things such as Disneyland, I'm sorry, World. Disney me, World, World, yep. Reopening and whatnot. I, there's other things I think besides wrestlemania and other wrestling related events within the area that i think people are just you know just craving to get back to an experience right. and they're, they're fl- the filming florida trip. bama again for mtv i mean not that i ever watched that show it's terrible but oh that's news to me as well but there there's another thing going on but i just think everybody that's you know like willing to make the travel willing to pay for tickets and lodging and everything else with that yeah. whole week and weekend are going to try to make the most of it and attend any wrestling related events they can get to yeah. um, maybe I mean, like they perhaps may be bush gardens yeah just other things because it's like hey we're down here we can finally do yeah. stuff again so yeah. i think i think it could happen the more we talk about it at first i was thinking maybe not just because of less travel taking place sure. but i think you never know and maybe you know the They'll be a little reckless because, you know, uh, the government uh, sending out those uh, stimmy checks again. So, you know, exactly. you never know. Exactly. I don't know. Fake wannabe ballers, you know, spending all their money on WrestleMania and PlayStation 5s. I can't get any of it. <laughs> <sighs> but uh, that's good news. I mean, uh, real, real good news uh, for what we have going on, hopefully, for WrestleMania. <clears throat> Let's talk one other thing, too. WWE news. The A&E Network has a new show coming out called WWE's Most Wanted Treasures. Uh, The premise for it is that some of the iconic things that you've seen some of your favorite wrestlers wear, they've lost track of. They don't know where it is, and they want to get those things back and maybe give them back to the performers that made them famous. A Ric Flair robe, a Kane mask, uh, you know, a Booker T robe, you know, stuff like that. Maybe a a member of Eminem's, you know, jacket has disappeared. You know, where is that jacket? I don't know. Your thoughts, Linda, on this show called WWE's Most Wanted Treasures on the ANE Network. I find it very unique, and I will be watching. I I find these kind of shows interesting because it does bring a little history into it, and it it features um, you know just just regular people, a common folk, if you will, yeah. in a high platform type show. You know, with stars that they obviously idled hence them having um, the undertaker's hat or Mm -hmm. i'm not sure what the item was that taker was featured on that but uh his was his hat man can mankind's mask uh Uh, kane's mask you know you know you know what i what lost wwe treasure i most want to see found 
for some reason it stuck out when I saw about this show. I want to find out who has the original Rick Martel arrogance cologne spray. Oh or yeah, canister. Or... Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty I cool. Loved him. Does Jimmy Hart still has a, have his original bullhorn? You know, things mm. like that. Gimmicks that the guys had that they made famous. You know, Jim Cornette's tennis racket or right. Paulie's, you know, uh, mobile phone. <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, I think it's going to be a great show. It looks like it's premiering Sunday, April 18th at uh, 10 Eastern, 9 Central on the A&E Network. So uh, set your calendar, set your DVRs for that. It looks good to me. Let's talk SmackDown from Friday night. Um, the main event for Fastlane is set. It is signed. It's Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. But Edge took umbrage to what Daniel Bryan had to say. Daniel Bryan didn't like what Edge had to say. Jay Uso is just angry all the time, and he does all Roman Reigns' bidding. Now what we have coming up this Friday on SmackDown is, it looks like, Jay Uso and Edge to win the chance to be the special enforcer for a Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan match. Your thoughts on the main event playing out on SmackDown? Well, one part of SmackDown that I loved was the interaction backstage between Edge and Jay Uso when they had their conversation. How Edge was like, you know, what, Jay, I've known your family for many years. It's it's like we're all family, and all of a sudden you see Jay Uso kind of smiling, being like, yeah, which is a nice change of scenery, just because as you said. We've just been seeing angry Jay Uso just doing everything and right. anything, which he, right. Roman Reigns was, which again, that was the stipulation. You know, once he lost that match with his cousin, I get it. But it was just a nice change of scenery, a little breath of fresh air. But then all of a sudden he's like, no, no, no. You know, and we got that Jay Uso that we've been seeing. So I was like, okay, I like how we're getting to see this other side of Jay. Maybe he's slowly but surely you know, kind of steering away from Roman. And it, it, you just kind of got that feel um, just from seeing his interaction with Edge backstage. Now, come to this contract signing, I did really enjoy how Daniel Bryan got under Roman Reigns' skin. Because at first, you know, Roman's like, I don't, I'm not signing this. No. And he just kept egging him, egging him on, saying, I did something you couldn't do. And that was tap or make your cousin Jey Uso tap yeah. or you know submit so again another reference to like roman being upset with jay i think possibly and i'm just looking ahead now that we're talking about this i feel that this week on smackdown we're gonna have edge be the enforcer um and you know, somehow Roman Reigns still wins, though, because we're going to get this big Edge Roman Reigns showdown at WrestleMania. But I feel that Jey Uso, this is where there's going to be some of the interference that may not help his cousin Roman. Just because yeah. it's kind of that seed's been planted, I feel. They've been planted back and forth. So uh, we will get it all played out at Fastlane, which is the final road bump to WrestleMania on the road to WrestleMania. Uh, Mysterio, Dominic, and Ray took on the Street Profits which were, uh, wait, it was, I'm sorry. It was Ray and Dominic Mysterio and the Street Profits took on Ziggler, Rude, Gable, and Otis. I happened to check in on our good friend Drew Bay Dallas show on the SNE Network with our good friend David the Octavius, the Zohan hero. Um, that's a new nickname, by the way. I'm calling Dave the Zohan now. Mm. Uh Dave was right. Dave tweeted this out and says it looks like they zapped everybody with the men in black thing because uh, I thought Otis and Dolph Ziggler hated each other. Right. I got to agree. I, I'm 100% behind him on this one. Your thoughts on Otis, Gable, Ziggler, and Rude teaming up against Mysterio, Mysterio, and the Prophets? Well, I think it's just more so a, a setup for a chance for Street Prophets to once again face the Dirty Dogs. Are they even still the Dirty Dogs? I mean, you kind of forget that they're the tag team champs because they're right, really because haven't... they never defend. It. <laughs> yeah, or they really don't get much of a platform to really showcase that. And you know, instead of being in a tight feud against Street Profits or right, you know, said tag team, they're tagged in an eight man tag with just a quick verbal mention that they're the champions. No fanfare. No. I mean, glory. at least the good news is the Mysterios aren't facing Rollins or Murphy. Right. I mean, okay, yeah, that's one good thing. Um, 
I do want to see Ray and Dominic eventually steer apart. I mean, maybe he's still learning from his dad. I don't know, but I just, right. that's kind of getting stale for me. I want to see something else with that. Um, but anywho, um, the match itself, I think it's just kind of setting it in place for a street profit to get another title shot, but the whole thing with Otis and Gable, like that quick heel turn, I'm still kind of, you know, taking that in, wondering how, Right. Yeah. Why that yeah, I want yeah. that Otis. <laughs> so, That's a yeah, it's a big mistake with Otis, honestly. Yeah. Um Otis is a lovable guy. You know, Otis being the Otis that he was was lovable. People loved Otis, especially with Mandy Rose. Yeah. Him being and the heel. He was the money in the bank. Right. Winner. He had a lot of things happening. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe things can steer out after, you know, WrestleMania, maybe a a reboot once again. I'm not sure. Who knows? Let's talk Cesaro and Murphy. Um, Cesaro defeats Murphy by disqualification, but it's because uh, Seth Rollins interferes and comes after him in his St. Paddy's Day uh, business suit with no socks. <laughs> That's his new look? I guess. I, I mean, I know the, the socks and no socks and loafers thing is a, is a thing, but boy, oh boy. That's his look. Okay, go for it. Well, I mean, now he's not necessarily the Messiah. He's just, but he does want you to embrace the vision. So, I... wait, I embrace the vision. I watched all eight episodes, nine episodes of WandaVision. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I will say, I'm, I, uh, you know, seeing Murphy and Rollins again, I'm like, no, let let let's steer away from that again. But. Yeah. Obviously, it was just to roll into a deeper Rollins Cesaro feud. Um, yeah, which, yeah, it, it went hard, it went heavy. A couple stomps there. And we obviously know where this is going. I mean, maybe we just get it at Fastlane. Or I don't know, Mita, do you think this is something that will continue on to WrestleMania? Oh, Can I, they stretch I, it that I, I think Rollins Cesaro is going to be a WrestleMania match. I really think that Cesaro, it's time for him. We've seen Antonio Castanoli a long time here in the WWE. And I think there's bigger things ahead for him in the WWE. I think a singles push maybe to higher belts, maybe to a world championship. Mm. Well, then they did show Seth Rollins stare down with Shinsuke Nakamura backstage, which, you know, him and Sadar were a tag team. So I'm like, uh-huh. is this just a way to stretch out that feud? Or is there going to be some type of alliance with them, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, this is kind of a dual thing here. Natalia and Tamina defeat Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair, but also I want to talk about Nia Jax taking Reggie, Reginald, <laughs> on a shopping spree. Uh, how are you feeling that? I mean, you know, because she just came in looking like a boss and goes, Reginald, I know you've had a bad time. Let's take you on a shopping spree. Let's get you some clothes. Yes, I did like that segment. It did make me laugh. <laughs> we, we, got a, we got a booty smack up in that as well. Yeah. So- that, that was fun to see. Um, <laughs> I think Reginald, again, is gold. Um, been using him in a lot of different ways, but it, it's it's working as far as him and Nia Jax, just because it's showing another side of Nia. Again, I know she's a badass, and her and Shayna are the tag team champions, yeah. but it's just another way where it's going to interfere between her and Shayna. And, or maybe she's playing Reginald just to you know, distract Sasha, which is what we're seeing here. Distract right, don't they have a tag team title match this summer? Yeah, so maybe she's just using him, but I, it's, it's been pretty funny, the whole shopping segment. I, I like when they do off-site vignettes like that, just, just for the comedy factor, but yeah. it, it, it does help move along the storyline as well. I think so. Big E defeats Sami Zayn uh, for the Intercontinental Championship Open Challenge because, uh, you know, King Corbin just wasn't fast enough. I you know, said- first man in the ring. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Sammy, that was funny. I didn't think he would win, but I accept. <laughs> I accept, I accept. You know, Sammy Zayn um, right now hasn't won anything in a long time, right? I mean, he's pretty much on the losing end of a lot of stuff. But that doesn't mean he's not entertaining. Uh, keep Sammy Zayn on TV for me. It's great. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, and the whole documentary thing. Let's keep that going into Mania. Yeah. Finally, again, the pull apart at the end of the night between Edge, Roman, Jey Uso, and Daniel Bryan. Um, they were going after each other. Uh, and Daniel Bryan taking a shot at Edge. Roman Reigns taking a shot at Edge. Daniel Bryan going after Jey Uso. Uh, the only thing you didn't say was Jey Uso going after Roman Reigns. So um, it's getting heated. Um, 
you know, we're making our way to WrestleMania. By the way, you know, once we start talking about Raw tonight, too, did you see who's on the official WrestleMania poster right now? I see a whole bunch of wrestlers and somebody else. I didn't see, but is it Bad Bunny? It's Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny is on the WrestleMania poster. Does that mean he's taking on your boy, The Miz? Probably, who's not on the poster? I'm surprised he's already on the poster then. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we just get another musical performance. Hey, Maybe. he did the Grammys last night, so uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> here's, uh, here's who was on the poster. We've got uh, in the center is Roman Reigns. Behind Roman on Roman's right is the Queen Charlotte. On the left is Drew McIntyre. Bobby's right next to him. Right next to Roman is Sasha. Uh, right next to Charlotte is Edge and Bianca Belair. And then Bad Bunny over on the side. So, but I mean, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people on a poster, and only seven of them are wrestlers. Nothing against Bad Bunny, but I mean, yeah, just but the wrestling stuff. Not even a little DP on there, uh, Damian Priest, that is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you had two images of DP, then you'd have a double DP, and you can't have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, that's interesting, though. But I mean, Again, this is reaching out to a further audience, but I mean, I'm just surprised that they would already have him on there, but I mean. Right. Let's talk Raw real quick for tonight. Uh, we got a couple things in store. We've got Riddle taking on uh, Mustafa uh, Ali for the U.S. title. And uh, your boys, the New, New Day, Day, challenge the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Hurt Business. Do the New Day, if it's a title match, become champions again? Or is it Hurt Business hold on to the belts? I believe it is a title match, but um, as much as I obviously would love for the New Day to get the belts back, I just, the Hurt Business just has so much momentum behind them. I don't see them losing any gold right now. So Or or the silver, because, you know, those tag team belts oh. are technically silver, but. Okay, eh, yes. What are you going to do? <laughs> but uh, Fastlane as... is coming up this Sunday. Uh, Linda Kay, uh, Fastlane available on the Peacock and the WWE Network. I have officially made my move. You know, we've had some text messages back and forth with you, me, Matthew, and so forth. Uh, I have canceled my WWE Network. Yes. I mean, that deal is a steal. That deal was a steal. There was a deal out there. I don't know if it's still out there or not, but it was two fifty dollars a month. Yeah, I, I do believe it's available through, it, um, like, right before Mania, that deal is going on. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely worth it. I know it's the f for four months where it's two fifty a month. I mean, come yeah. on, why you wouldn't can't you? That. Right. Yeah, and then back up so to four ninety nine, which is still half price from what I was paying mm -hmm. for the WWE Network. Absolutely. So all right, we've got a big week of shows. We're building towards Fastlane, the final road bump on the road to WrestleMania. Linda K. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will announce it. You will be going head to head with Matthew Thomas. No man, they call Meathead uh, tomorrow morning. So let's hope you have a good show. Don't let Matthew try to do his shenanigans that he always does. And uh, <laughs> I hope everything works out. I am on assignment tomorrow morning. So, okay, we've got this, Meathead. We got I, this. I'm glad to hear. So, for Matthew Thomas, who you'll talk to tomorrow, for Linda <laughs> Kay, I'm the man they call Meathead. Hey, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone. <laughs>